Come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie talk show podcast coming your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. Because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like I you. I don't think anyone's as like-minded as, as uh, to this, Colin. I really don't. I mean, there's got it. There's someone for everyone, right? Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's There's someone they, out there doing the same thing. That's right what now. they tell me. Sean has found a tiny hand, <laughs> I, and yeah, it's I'm on sorry. his finger. And, and then is, his life has changed now. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I recommend tiny hands to all people. Little rubber hands. I mean, I'm calling hand. him Sean, but you probably don't know who he is. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. I think I was telling you how you could help us out with that, but you got to hit that like or subscribe button. It did all that. You yeah, know the drill. Smash that bell. Smash That's that right. Bell. <laughs> We've been at this for like 500 and some episodes. <laughs> yes. We have yeah, almost yeah. 10 years. We're yep. creeping up on 10 year anniversary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that means wow. that uh, eventually we're going to do things that we swore that we would never do and bring movies that we've already <laughs> watched. So it's very possible that like last week you listened to this episode, a uh, previous version oh, yeah. of this episode. But who was on that episode? Uh, it was a not I. none of these folks yeah, here only colin and it was okay. a while ago um so, so anyway we, tonight so we watched a movie chosen by colin yep. yeah colin what movie did you finally 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 bring back to the uh, show after what, many what did you finally make us watch <laughs> uh, i mean it's halloween so we watched the halloween classic Trick or treat! Trick Yay! Or treat. Yay! Right. Finally. Finally. I, I, I like this. I like this. Uh, uh, like applause for the movie. Having now that we've just watched it, because you always go into it going like, "Okay." I mean, so the, the reason, applause is more for you, but okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, achievement in your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah Colin, great. I've been sitting next to this poster of this movie for <laughs> six years yeah. now and yeah, have never seen it. Yeah, yeah. This uh. movie is your. Uh, degrees of Kevin Bacon right here. Yeah, everything yeah. everything yeah. comes back to trick or treat. I know because I guess that's the thing, listener. If you've been listening to this <laughs> show for a long enough time, you've heard references to this movie over the course mm-hmm. of many of uh, five hundred mm-hmm. episodes. Uh, because you we usually find like there's someone who was in trick or treat yeah. or uh, had like oh I want a real rock and roll movie. You know we should watch trick or treat. Oh yeah, I want yeah. a movie where someone like gets possessed by a record. You know we should watch trick or treat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they never watched it. I've been telling them about it for because they were saving it for this That's night right. so we could all That's watch right. it together. We wanted you to have this guy. Yep. We did. Yeah. All right. So, From the year uh, 1986. Okay. Directed by Charles Martin Smith. Do we know Charles Martin Smith? Do you know Charles Martin Smith? It sounds familiar. It sounds like a fake name to me. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I mean, it's Charles Martin. Yeah, that sounds like a basic. That's almost John Doe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess it's a thing because that you sounds don't. sounds like a law firm. <laughs> yeah. He's in the movie. Uh, he was the teacher at the high school, but he was wearing a disguise, right? Because yeah. he knew that you may recognize him. He's an actor. Like the one actual disguise? Like, yeah. in the movie, it wasn't. He's disguise. wearing the, the glasses. Oh, the Groucho. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Because he was, um, I mean, he's an actor. He's been in, well, probably the most th- thing you know him from. He was in The Untouchables, uh, with oh. the Kevin Costner yeah. movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a great he movie. He was the accountant uh, in that he was he was Toad in American Graffiti. Oh, oh. yeah. He was in Starman. Gotcha. Where he was a government agent that was chasing uh, Jeff okay. Bridges. Okay, yeah. So he's an actor who became a director and has since gone on to do movies like A Dolphin's Tale. Oh, <laughs> good, good, good for him. Well... Oh, got to collect that paycheck. Yeah, that's Charles oh, Martin Smith. OK, guy. now we've got a face that we're showing around. Yeah, and everybody's yeah. like, oh, I've definitely seen that man before. <laughs> I know that guy. OK, yeah, I think this was yeah. maybe you've his... probably seen him on the special features of a dolphin's tail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sean is committed to those bonus features. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Morgan Freeman came back for that one. Yes, Morgan Freeman. Is in both those movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Charles is, Martin, is he you in said it he directed both of them. He's in it. He's in it. Yeah. Yeah. Does he stand up? That's my next question. I think he's a trainer, isn't he? Okay. A dolphin trainer? Or he's like... We're getting too far. I know, because I, I... didn't watch I those pilot movies. I don't know. I just want to clear it up. I watch I've horror... I've also never seen them. <laughs> horror and metal movies <laughs> over here. I just want to yeah. about that. I have not seen those movies. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's, Senator there's, Tyler, it's, uh, it's, it's documented here. You have watched a dolphin's tale. <laughs> 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 Which like that's struck the record. <laughs> yeah, struck in. Dolphins please. are not dolphins are not on the list of movies about that animal that I don't like. 
You know how I hate horse movies? Yeah. Oh. And, yeah. yeah. I like dolphin movies. I'm okay. all right with that. That was a good it flipper. Right, dolphin movies. Yeah, yeah, I was okay. like, yeah. How many dolphin movies? Is Houston Roxanne? I mean, I mean I'm not horse, like sorry. I'm not like offended by like I hate horse movies. Yeah, I hate yeah, them. Like, hate them. I hate them. What is them. a horse movie that you hate? Name sea one. Biscuit. Okay. Oh, okay. Like that movie the, okay. sucks though. Yeah, I, that movie sucks. Is that a hot take? That movie sucks. People right? like sucks. Sea I don't know. I haven't seen that either because I watch fucking heavy metal horror <laughs> yeah. movies. They're like, what? Yeah. yeah. Everybody's here for like, yeah, we want. <laughs> fucking rock and roll. No, We're talking you know about what? dolphins and horses. You know what? You guys can fuck off. Let's talk about Black Beauty. Right. It just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> the Black Stallion. Uh, Black Stallion's a great movie. International Velvet. <laughs> Black Stallion no, Returns is like pretty good. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. War uh, Horse the... puts me to sleep. Yeah. I imagine it is a spooky season. Back to <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. this a uh, spooky season movie? Yes. There were pumpkins yeah, technically. The that lit, lit, lit <laughs> up and burst fire I mean, in this movie. That's good there was a Halloween me. dance. Yeah, there was. There a was. Dance with the special K. And I'm really curious to know where this movie was shot because it looks nearly identical to the the sets there and, and like town they're using in these this new Halloween trilogy. Where are they shooting that? Yeah, North Carolina. Carolina? Oh, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that is where they're That's shooting. Probably, yeah. probably I knew it. Yeah. I All right. knew it. So Same. I do very have similar. a story. Ooh. All right. So we often talk a lot about canon films. And, you do know, we? Oh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> if, you, if you listen to the show. But, like, I don't know if we're giving the appropriate, like, uh, respect to Dino De Laurentiis, the oh, producer. Oh, yeah. Yes, we des- he deserves mm. respect. Who, yeah, because he has been around forever and has made, in the 80s, like, produced all sorts of crazy yes. uh, sci-fi, fantasy, horror movies, and basically was mm-hmm. responsible mm-hmm. for uh, the trashy side of Stephen King cinema, I guess, in, in the 80s. Um, God bless him. But he... And we've we've also mentioned that he uh, owned Chinichetta, right? The mm-hmm. studios... Which right. uh, Charles Band ended up buying, mm. and Dino left him. And Dino moved his studios to Wilmington, North Carolina, mm-hmm. in the 1980s, and he founded the Dino De Laurentiis Entertainment Group (DEG). And so they made movies like Maximum Overdrive mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So um, this was a product of that. So yeah, it is shot, in, and like the, I guess the Crow later was shot in Wilmington, North Carolina. Really? Like this is because uh, uh, Mark Price, who's in this movie, uh, said that when he arrived at the studios, it was like going into. It wasn't like studios. It was like a bunch of warehouses that were just you know there in the in the city. Mm. But yeah, they were taking over, and so that was like Hollywood moves to North Carolina. A lot of CW shows are shot in North Carolina. Yeah. I wonder if all of them are. Because I think this was the inception maybe of that industry. Yeah. And then they're still, it's been built out. Now Mm -hmm. they're still using it. Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Yeah. That was Dawson's Creek was one of the first ones. that Everyone's like, it's so weird. They're shooting there. And now all CW is shot there, basically. So basically we got (laughs) Los Angeles. Uh, we got uh, Atlanta, Georgia, yep. Yep. And, and Wilmington, North Carolina. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. are the big hot spots yep. of the movie industry in mm-hmm. uh, North America. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> and Vancouver. Uh, yeah, yeah. In North America, Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the whole of Canada. Mm-hmm. That's yes. Yeah. All right. So, uh, prior to go, I mean, I guess you know, we like I said, we did an episode on this before. So a lot of the history stuff. I apologize if we're overlapping uh, if we go into it. But I'm kind of curious about like you know. You guys watching this tonight because I hyped this thing up, I guess, I you mean, know, ultimately, yes, you for know. way too many years. And so, you know, there's uh, we keep watching these rock and roll horror movies. Are we never done Black Roses? No. No. Have you seen Black no. Roses? No, we've Negative. talked about it before. We have not seen it. Guess we'll have to do that one next, right? <laughs> we did talk about that one. That one sounded, from what I remember... We did Rock and Roll Nightmare. We well, did Black, Black, Nightmare. Black yes. Roses Fantastic. is when you talk about heavy metal horror movies, that's the one that people usually bring up, Black Roses, right. because it had a fucking awesome VHS cassette cover, which was um, like three-dimensional, right? It was actually poofy, you know? The, oh, the design I love those covers, it. yeah. Yeah, a guitar with roses all over it and these crazy eyes. And, you know. uh-huh. and uh, so that, I think the artwork made a real big impression. And uh, who did the music for some of that? It wasn't Wasp. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. That's the artwork for Black Roses. Nice. But the guys who did Black oh, Roses, yeah, it's like an embossed if cover, I remember yeah. correctly, also did have a production uh, um, hand in Rock and Roll Nightmare. 
which we watched. Yeah. Yes. Which was the John Michael Thor uh, rock and roll um, yep. uh, horror movie. With an ending you'll never see coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had me and on after the edge that, of my seat. Well, what do we got for rock and roll horror movies? I mean, you know. Uh, Can you count Slaughterhouse Rock? See, I was hoping. <laughs> but I don't um, think so. There's a musician in it. Yep. <laughs> uh, Sorority House or Slumber Party Massacre 2. Didn't they have the, wasn't it rock and there's roll? There's a guy with a guitar with a dr- drill you know, yeah. mm-hmm. Um There's uh, one that's called Terror on Tour, which nobody's seen, but that's out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shock them dead with uh, Tracy Lords, maybe. Mm-hmm. Strangeland? Uh, Strangeland would be a good maybe. one. Maybe, yeah. Because mm-hmm. that actually is like, well, it's Dee Snyder right. from Twisted right. Sister. Right. Uh, Sister. Death um, Deathgasm. Deathgasm, yeah. I would say that Uncle is Pecker probably the Deathgasm's like the most uh, recent closest analog to yeah. Trick or Treat. Mm-hmm. If you've seen that movie, except it kind of like it had a lot of promise, and then it kind of takes a detour in the mid to late act and goes all screwy. That was the one that Walmart censored so much they created a whole new title and cover for it. Yeah, yeah. they called it like something else entirely, and they had their own special slip cover over the they DVD. Did, yes. I was like, this. Fucking ridiculous. I can't Walmart remember where they what Takes they called it. it no, I can't it remember like, either. Did they take out both death and gasm? Ga- I think the gasm was the more I offensive. Think gasm part. was the one yeah. they did not like. Yeah, like, we can't have gasm. I'm gonna see on if here. I can look it up. Yeah. It's funny, yeah. Well, um, all right. So we got to take it back to 1986, mm-hmm. right? And like, why this would be a concept for a movie? Did you guys live through the Satanic Panic? Do you remember all oh, of this? Sorry. Walmart, like Walmart called it Heavy Metal Apocalypse. Heavy Metal Apocalypse. Different, right. Completely different title altogether. Really it's like a gasm. cool Heavy Metal Yeah, but if you're looking for Deathgasm, you're never going to find it. Because <laughs> it's it's under a different title. Yeah, and like metal has has, has changed since Trick or Treat yeah. came out. Yes. You know, I mean, once you go through like the uh, Norwegian death metal yes. you know, stuff, it's, yeah. it's very different yeah. than oh, the... Yeah. Well, that's Ooh. like... The, this maybe this is my age and my generation speaking, but my opinion of like a band like Kiss, for example, has always been their sound does not match their look. Yeah, well, their the sound is Alice pop Cooper. music. Mm. It's pop music, yeah. and but yet they're dressing. And I kind of, but I also feel the same way about Ghost. Mm. Ghost is a band of my generation that dresses really cool, but their music is whiny and lame. Like, yeah, because yeah, they're to they're me yeah. like the analog to like yes. a Kiss yeah. or Alice Cooper. So, so it's not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not coming for your generation because I, I feel <laughs> I the same say, way about Ghost. Said, this yeah. is not so, about Kiss. I was like, watch it. Yeah, I know. I, I feel like I'm on a minefield right now, but yeah, but 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 I'll piss. Off. I'm an equal opportunist. I hate Ghost too. And I hate Kiss. I hate them both. So you know, like, <laughs> well, they had. I guess yeah, that was the thing. Like those guys. uh there, there's like the playcraft Satanism, and then like the guys who are like, no, we are actually Satanists, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. What's Which the, what's are the, one the movie with uh, Rory? Was it Rory Culkin? That's Lords of Chaos. Lords of Chaos. Yeah. That that's, is, a, that's the Norwegian black. Yeah, because that's based on a true story. Yeah. That's the yeah. story of Burzum. Yeah. Uh, Watch the guy, that movie. Yeah. That will mess you up. Right. Yeah. Boo. I know, because those guys were actually responsible for burning down yep. these uh, churches, uh, like right. you know, thousand year old, uh, awesomely built, yep. you know, old. That's uh, fucked up. And yeah. they burned them down. And there's a, 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 a very interesting tale about an album cover that is explained in that movie as well. Yeah. Well, no, that's a that's a known thing within well, the yeah. you know, The guy well, killed himself. Think, Man, what that. is happening over in Norway, guys? Like, <laughs> you ever look at the yeah. music and like well, the I mean, music what? and the true crime stories that come it's out of Norway? It's frosty. Wild. Oh. It's cold. It's foggy. There's dark no sun, and dank. probably. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's I mean, just the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Is it's yeah. gloom. Everyone. It's gloom. But it's like, the, the, but the country. It's like, you know, there's that band, <laughs> Children. Gloom country. Gloom country. I apologize. So you good people. Welcome to gloom. But your music is awesome. It came out of you know gloom your art. Country. We have oh, caves. Yeah, sent me gloom. We country. have rock and roll. Okay, okay. it's all but like gloomy. it's weird how it all like intersects because like there's that band Children of Bodom yeah. and the Lake Bodom murders is like right. a case they're still obsessed with like forty years later. Right, and so it just all kind of mm-hmm. circulates in this weird way that I don't know. There's there's something there, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean it's it's in the air. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, so who's uh, who's uh, who's in this movie? I mean, do only I know that? You know, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, I don't know. You tell us, Kyle. Other than the cameos, I got nothing. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I mentioned it while we were watching it, but uh, Mark Price from Family Ties, mm-hmm. yes. uh, Skippy on Family Ties, Skippy. is uh, Eddie Weinbauer in mm-hmm. this movie. Yes, always an Eddie. Um, who else would go on to do stuff? Doug Savant, who plays the bully, uh, Tim, yeah. mm-hmm. he, uh, we talked about on our Godzilla episode cause he was one of the military guys, but was he the guy who kept doing like the right thing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You remember him? We loved him. Yeah. Oh, we made a whole story and advanced his military <laughs> career and everything. Oh, so night. he redeems himself and his movie wow. career, huh? Yeah. 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 Well, the only one who didn't want but then play. people would, because you guys were mentioning Tony Goldwyn should have played yeah. that part yeah. uh, while uh, we were watching the movie, uh, and I'm like, well, he, he went on to do uh, Desperate Housewives. He was oh, on Desperate right. Housewives. So, so he, I think the whole see the whole right. series. I forget about that. Well, that he he's probably really rich then. Good for him. That show went on for forever and is still in syndication. So mm. that that show was a whole cultural moment. It yeah, it was. I re- it was so he landed. Yeah, yeah. He's- um, mm-hmm. Glenn Morgan, who is uh, the best friend Roger. Ah, uh, <laughs> I don't think he ever acted again, but uh, maybe I'm wrong. But he should have. He was a writer. I guess he did some script doctoring on this movie. But he was responsible for some of the best episodes of the X Files. I'm not sure if he was a showrunner, but he was definitely like a co-writer on a lot of the X-Files, and then he became a director, well, a writer. He wrote the Final Destination movies. Nice. At least oh. the first couple, one and three, I think, and then co-wrote them. Mm. Good pet- and he, three. he was a director. He directed um, Black Christmas, the remake. Uh, which, wait, which one? Uh, the, 2006. Oh, the 2006 okay. Black okay. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. There's three of those movies now, so yeah, got to yeah, yeah, that's uh, Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Uh, you're right. Um, mm-hmm. So he went on to go do stuff. And I think, you know, beyond that, you got your special cameos. Uh, Gene Simmons is in this movie. And Ozzy Osbourne's in this movie. Um, They're, uh, Gene Simmons' is best role? Depending if you like um, Runaway. I was his, like, I would say mustache, Runaway, yeah. That's <laughs> twirling villain in that one. Yeah. Which is pretty great. Well, mm-hmm. are we forgetting his uh, star turn in Never Too Young to Die? Oh, uh, that's trans- right. Or yeah. hermaphrodite. Forgot about that. <laughs> forgot about that. He was I had a long fingernail. <laughs> yeah. I did not forget about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, Gene, I mean, I'm sure Gene Simmons has been on the wall for a while now, right? But this is really has like, he? cements him, right? Huh? Well, we did Trick well, or Treat I mean, before. I was like, we already did yeah, Trick or yeah. Treat. So. And we did Runaway yeah. Yeah. and yeah. Never Too Young to Die. But yeah. So there's one more Gene Simmons movie role out there, and that's Wanted Dead or Alive with Rutger Hauer huh. uh, that we okay. still have to watch. To, to complete, I think, Gene Simmons when he was like, you know what? I want to be an actor for mm-hmm. a while. Yeah. And it was you all know, he, 86, 87. He's not bad. He's not bad. He's, he's not really bad. not. About uh, uh, Kiss in the in the park. Uh, yeah, in the Phantom, yeah. Of, the Phantom of the Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think They're I like fucking superheroes. I think I movie. actually enjoy him more as an actor than as a musician, honestly. Like, well, he's he does have a kind of a natural persona to yeah. him. Um, he's got charisma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a charisma, maybe. That's, you know, because I think we said that on the Runaway mm-hmm. episode and mm-hmm. even maybe mm-hmm. in the Never Too Young to Die episode. The irony is on this movie, and this was, I believe, confirmed by the producer, um, his agent set him up for this. And so they said, you know, when he was... So this is, I guess, I was reading an interview with the the producer or the writer, and he said Gene Simmons had an attitude when he was on this movie oh. because his his uh, agent had signed him up for it, Did and he he's like, be but then he's like, you know, well, because they wanted him for Sammy Kerr, uh. um, but then the, you know the guy's like, but I'm not dogging on him because that actually gives me more respect for the man because like he turned in a professional, he was a professional performer yes. and turned in a pretty good perfor- yeah, performance, yeah. even though he didn't want to be there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this feels like an actual like, oh, he feels like a person, like he feels like this role. You know, that, I actually have some respect for him, like not wanting to do this job, but still doing a good job. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a professional. Yeah. Like he yeah. Would, if he didn't want to do something, he'd just fuck off. Exactly. Yeah. 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 He wasn't Marlon Brando. Right. In, right uh, exactly. I, right. I mean, I guess that's the. the, the you the could comparison. just say he wasn't Marlon Brando, period. <laughs> yeah. And stop there. In yeah. The, we the get Island it. Island of Lost Souls. <laughs> yeah. 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 He plays Nuke, yeah. the DJ at the radio. He has station. what one scene, right? So like, yeah, he probably only like shot a couple two, days. Yeah. Maybe uh, he, and some voiceover. I think it, yeah, I was like, I think it was just the one. one yeah, scene and maybe and a lot of radio voiceover yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, and Ozzy Osbourne, he's just got the one scene. Uh, Ooh, but he's it, he's terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's like, not good. He cannot be anyone other than himself. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I don't, you know, obviously he became famous years later. Well, I mean, not that he wasn't famous already, but, you know, to a new generation of fans for the Osbournes, but that kind of, you know, I think he became maybe more comfortable in front of the cameras later in life yeah. than he was back then, where you can tell he's nervous. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. he's playing a preacher, which is hilarious, right? Mm-hmm. The Prince yeah. of yeah. Darkness. Yeah. The concept yeah. is really funny. Yeah. yeah. The concept yeah. is great. Yeah, because we were living back in 1986 in the dark days of Tipper Gore's war on uh, music. This is like exactly what she thinks is happening. Yes. Right? This yeah. movie is like her, sure. this is her worst nightmare. nightmare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember, and I think maybe I told the story before when we did this, but like, uh, I mean, there's I when I watch this movie, it reminds me a lot of the time because I was a metalhead, right? Yeah. And I mean, I wasn't into the shit that uh, Eddie Weinbauer is into, you know. Uh, I was just into hair metal, I guess, of, of <laughs> yeah. the 80s. But I remember that my parents, you know, because they're getting all this indoctrination from TV about, like, you know, rock and roll is the root of all evil. Were and they so worried about you, Colin? They gave me, a, there was a tape that we had to watch that was, you know, something that <laughs> circulated amongst church <laughs> groups about how, uh, you know, uh, evil rock and roll did, did was. Captain America pull up a chair and be like, so. No, but they had an example in this one. And somebody <laughs> out there is going to go like, oh, fuck, I remember this. Although I can't remember the band name. But there's like a minister, right? And he, they call or they get like this uh, rock star, rock star. He's in, he's in like some, you know. The church, the church band? Dark metal band oh, okay. to call. And the guy is fucking with him. Like, I know this now listening, you know, to it. He's, you know, like, you know, and the, uh, the church folks read this as he's possessed, <laughs> you know, and this is the evil of metal. Oh, and yeah, I remember having to watch that. <laughs> like, look, and even when we talked to him on the phone, he's possessed by the careful, evilness. Timmy. It's the devil. Yeah. Yeah. So the. Colin, your generation, it was heavy metal music. My generation, it was Pokemon and Harry Potter. Like, uh, because like, we're, well, remember I sent you guys, I was at the estate sale and I found that VHS tape that was all about educating people about the the, the black magic behind Harry Potter. It was literally the same oh, thing yeah, Colin's describing, thing, yeah. but yeah. it was Harry Potter instead of heavy Did metal Did you buy music. that? I forget. No, it was still sealed though. I should have bought it. <laughs> should have bought yeah. it. It's Clear- for the viewing pleasure. Clearly they weren't that concerned because they never watched it. So. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, like, yeah. this, that was their break glass yeah. in case of emergency. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. so, I never needed, thank God. I wonder if, like, because, I mean, when I was a kid, there really was this uh, sense that, like, you know, there were satanic cults all around you. I mean, it just, it was on all the TV uh, talk shows that you'd watch. Yeah. And there were re- local reports of, you know, like, the kids out in the field, they're, you know, nailing cats to trees and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And there's all and the spooky people. And we're interviewing Gore to get their yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess that's the era that this movie is coming from, and just like exploiting panic. the shit out of it, which is hilarious to me because it is Tipper Gore's yeah, worst, it really worst is. nightmare. Oh yeah. Um. So Eddie Weinbauer mm. is a high school student, a misfit. Um, Definitely. Yep. His name's Eddie, and he loves metal. Yep. Bunch of right, but he, but specifically, he loves uh, Sammy Kerr. He does. Uh, this, Sammy Kerr is the only one that understands him. They understand each other. Is it pretty much a one-sided thing? It's a parasocial relationship. Yes. yes. He's mm-hmm. writing letters, apparently, mm-hmm. to Sammy. Well, Sammy went to his high school. Yes. I guess that's what gives him the, the, the personal connection, mm-hmm. right? right? And so he writes these fan letters that are very personal. Uh, you know, He like, says some things in writing he shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like these uh these are called evidence for your future yeah. crimes. When you say Basically. I just can't take it anymore and I want to kill everybody, you should yeah. be writing that down and sending it well, to somebody. Didn't, see, but that's the thing that I like about the 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 eighties. They, mm-hmm. they they didn't have the imagination for that yet. Like it's all about self harm. He's gonna kill himself. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. the dark thoughts yeah. that right. he had. Yeah. He's not gonna kill everybody else. But, but even still, if you're sending that to a celebrity, they're gonna think you're a threat. Right. You yeah, know. <laughs> yes. But not Sammy, because Sammy understands mm-hmm. him. Yeah, we Sammy learned that Kirk. lesson in the early aughts with Stan Eminem. Oh, yes. Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Slim Slim wrote you, but you still ain't calling. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> the first like twenty minutes of this movie, like, are kind of a musical montage and setup. Uh, Eddie's dilemma in school. Mm. Uh, he likes a girl who he, he can't figure out how to make any but kind of contact with. This kid goes with. through slaughter high level torture. 
Like, yeah. it's beyond bullying and it's to torture, I think. Like, because yeah. it happens on multiple occasions in this movie. And anytime there's like nudity trauma, too, it's like, oh, oh yeah. you're going to have to go to yeah. therapy for that. Like, yeah. he, does. he gets picked on a lot. He gets thrown into what, the, back like, into the gym naked in front of all the. Why does this happen there. in 80s movies? Yeah, it's like, so it, severe. It happens a lot in 80s movies. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, uh, do you remember Lucas? Yeah. Is this an that actual was, representation of 80s school, school ties? I don't yeah. think so. I think <laughs> this is up, more man. like, this is how you remember. It afterwards, okay. it's not actually like, like the, you, the, you know the, the trauma of going through it is almost way more than what it actually was because of what you're experiencing, and that's well, the way you remember to. it right. is more traumatic yes. than what actually what happened. Actually happened. Mm-hmm. But this is what you imagined happened, you know, is the the, the humiliation in high school. It felt so bad. Yeah, it felt like that. I man, I wake up every day grateful I'm not in high school. You know, <laughs> oh my like, god, thank god. Like I have nightmares all the time that I have to go back to high school. Same, I have same. nightmares that I have oh homework god. in high school that I feel. Yeah, like, oh, mm-hmm. math. Do you guys yeah. ever have that kind of like sitcom setup of like, oh my god, you were one credit short and you never graduated? Yes, so you have to <laughs> I go have back that all the time. Yes, <laughs> I have like, that all the time. I'm too weak. I'm yeah. too weak to be around teenagers. Yeah. I can't go back to high school. <laughs> it's like, oh, you never I'm graduated. afraid of them. Yeah, it, it's never like, oh, you have to get your GD. No, no, no. It's like you, you have, have to, to go, go back, back to high school. Yep. As a 37 year old. Mm-hmm. Like, it's awful. <laughs> it is nightmarish. Yeah. I never have those. How oh, you God. Never have I that? sleep oh, soundly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Colin just floats through life. Yeah. <laughs> On the notes of Rock and Roll. It. Yeah. That's right, because I'm one of Rock's chosen warriors, <laughs> and we're going to rule the apocalypse, yep. according to Sammy Kerr. The only one Who's Sammy left? Kerr? Tony Fields. Who is Tony Yeah, Fields? who is this guy? Uh, uh, Sammy Kerr. Uh, well, yeah. Who is mm-hmm. the guy who's playing Sammy He can do Kerr. some sweet like backflips. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Tony Fields, the actor who played Sammy Curry in the movie is, um, the only thing that I can really find that he was, so do you, do you remember a TV show called Solid Gold? Yes, I do because it's on the boys. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) It's the best moment maybe ever in the boys is an episode of Solid Gold. Oh, it's so good. Okay, (laughs) Okay, well, there you go. It was a TV show. used to be on Saturday mornings. uh, And uh, the Solid uh, Gold Dancers. He was a Solid Gold Dancer. All right. I know. All right, Solid Gold Dancers. Yeah. And he was uh, in a movie called The uh, Chorus Line, which was a Broadway show they made a movie into. And uh He's no longer. Well, he died young. He uh, died of AIDS. Like I don't know. In the, not very long after this movie was wow. made. That's sad. So, that is sad. Yeah, because the I guess the thing about I guess this is what I get out of watching this movie, right? Um, and I guess I, the, originally they wanted Blackie Lawless of Wasp uh, to be Sammy gotcha. Kerr, but he said no. So they got uh, Tony Fields. But when I watch this movie, I'm like, this is the rock star that I always want to see. When you go to a rock show, right. you know, he's, right. he's and energy like, and yeah. mobile, he did great flipping. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's awesome in this role. He has right. stage presence. Yes, because he's familiar with Broadway. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I suppose yeah. that's you know his acrobatics on stage, and he's always moving around and you know going into these poses and all this mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. It's like he nails what a fucking heavy metal rock star is. Yeah, and then you watch stuff like I guess that's you know. I remember the comparison in my mind was I saw Queen of the Damned years later and, yeah. and as Stuart um, Townsend, Townsend did, cool. you know, out and, he, and they had him out in front of all these people, you know, this mm-hmm. big concert yeah. that they'd set up. And it was like the most lifeless fucking, you know, I'm like, it's supposed to be the vampire Lestat, you know, and like, why would anybody? Yeah, I was like, that's been on my list for a while. Yeah. It's a terrible rock performance, you yeah, know, and I yeah. guess I grade them all against uh, uh, Tony Fields. Yeah. In, he in. is good. <laughs> He's, He's really good, but I was really confused that it wasn't like an actual like rock. 80s rock star in this role. Mm. Like, did yeah. they all just pass or like, well, like they were, were they too expensive? Like what? Well, like, Gene Simmons said no, and yeah. and Blackie Lawless said no, and so I don't know. I don't know how they landed on him, but yeah, because you'd mean, think they'd just keep going down the list for the crossover, like built an audience appeal, you know, right. yeah, from a marketing standpoint. You know? Like, can you just put something on your bulletin board, yeah. your record label, and just yeah, see exactly, who, see who bites, <laughs> right? Want to play a rock god who comes back from the dead? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what I guess what this movie is about, right? It's yeah. well, it also incorporates the idea of backmasking is what it was called yes. which uh, uh judas priest had to actually go to fucking trial yep. in england right. to prove that they weren't satanically possessed and leaving 
backwards messages on their records. This is a real thing. This is what happens when white yeah. moms get too much time on their hands, man. They <laughs> right? make up shit like this. Right? Come into court and prove it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm here. I'm not possessed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll show you how we do it. it. And I, you know, it's like, yeah. you know. But yeah, it was a thing. I mean, the idea that what a you know, waste of fucking time right? <laughs> and taxpayer money. Yeah, but it, um, Jesus, it it, it, uh, it took the popular imagination. You know, yeah. there was a there was a real uh, demonic war mm-hmm. being waged against the souls of this you know the world's children. Well, I mean, the, to, so that it would feel like a real thing if you believed yeah. in this stuff. And a Martin lot of people did. Preschool disaster, I guess. I yeah, would call that it. was the big. That one. was the big one. What happened? Uh, it, it's a whole thing, but a lot of uh, there was a lot of accusations of satanic rituals and kids being molested and whatnot, and it it it's all through, was like, nothing. It was all covered uh, memories through hypnotism. Yep, they'd, oh. they'd, they'd ask these kids, mm-hmm. you know, leading questions, I guess, as psychotherapy because yep. you know they were exhibiting strange behavior, and the kids would remember. You know, they the, were saying the stuff kids say, fly around the room yep. and do all this stuff, and so the adults. Believe that this was true. That the, the, right. the you it, know. it had a ripple effect that was insane, and Jesus. and but like in the way it started, the way it spiraled out of control, and this was even like pre-internet, like and it still went crazy. But yeah, there's a number of like true crime podcasts and documentaries have covered the mm-hmm. McMartin preschool like yeah. down. I guess yeah, I guess it's, I'll put that on. The look list. it up. It's wild. Yeah, it feels like this satanic panic maybe was crystallized there yes and then it, yeah every community was under potential attack from yep it's like uh, you 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 read up on that situation and you're like oh so that's why the salem witch trials happen exactly yeah. yep yeah. yep it's the same yep. thing yeah. it spiraled yeah. out of control less, so quickly uh, yeah. yeah that same stuff but less information yeah mm-hmm. it's the same and thing just like, we're yeah burn you yep. yeah and we're gonna figure it out we're gonna hash this out on geraldo and uh <laughs> yes. bill donahue yeah. yes and, that'll solve and, our, and, all our yeah. problems <laughs> oh my god we're all Donahue were the witch trials of the 20th century. They were, really yeah. were yeah. yeah. I've been telling you, man. Sean, you're going to listen to that shit about McMartin, and you're going to be like, oh, my God. This okay. really, like, this happened not that long ago. Like, okay. I'm, I'm yeah, interested. Yeah. I'm, it's I'm, amazing. We'll find it. Well, the movie then posits that, okay, if this was actually true and possible, then Sammy Kerr, this demon rocker, right? Because we see him uh, in uh, video clips early on. Biting the head off a snake and drinking its that blood. That was gross. Going. That was, was really gross. And, and I turned on. I was like, "This is a bit much." Yeah, yeah. and I yeah. like Ozzy Osbourne. It, right, because it's, really it's an exaggeration of that story, yes. right? Because there's always it's either Ozzy, Alice Cooper, or it, uh, Frank Zappa. Yeah, somebody yeah. bit the head off a bat. Well, there was the chicken with Alice Cooper too. That like because I think that was the real yeah. that was the real thing that yeah. happened and yeah. became somehow he bit the head off of a bat. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, yeah, somebody threw a chicken up on the stage and he thought it was a fake chicken right. and yep. threw it. Or no, no, no. He thought it was a real chicken. He, he thought it would fly. It. Yeah. And so he threw it into the crowd and they tore it apart. Yeah. Oh, um, so Sammy Kerr, Demon Rocker, yes. right, uh, is dead. He, he is died. Dead. And this is a crushing mortal blow to Eddie Weinbauer. Right. Who, because first, it's I mean, suspect, too. His what death is his death is incredibly suspect. He's supposed to come play a show at his hometown where nobody wants him there, and he dies in a fire in a hotel. I mean, that's very true. Mm. But uh, <laughs> uh, they canceled Sammy, and like you said, Sammy went to his Eddie's high school. But they canceled his show. He was going to come and play for Halloween and everything. So Eddie's crushed by that, and then he finds out that yes, he indeed died, Sammy Kerr. Yeah, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. did he do it on purpose? Well, there is that scene with uh, Gene Simmons where we were wondering if he was... So Gene Simmons somehow has come into possession because he went to high school with Sammy Kerr yes. and he has come into possession with the Haunted Record mm. album, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The like song record column? In the Key of Death. Well, that's where the idea came from. <laughs> Dom will know what I'm talking about. We songs in the this Key out. of Death. That's a great mm-hmm. title for it. Rob Zombie's definitely seen this movie, hasn't he? Oh yeah, Lords well, of I mean, Salem in the record. In years since, I've seen a bunch of stuff about haunted record albums. Oh, you yeah. know, and I always go like, "Well, is that you know an ode back to to trick or treat?" Uh, but the idea, I guess, is that his soul is, or his spirit, his evil force is somehow actually in the record. Like he 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 did this uh, satanic ritual. Yes. We we think because Eddie dreams that there was a satanic ritual with in fire the, in the, the hotel and some guys like doing yeah the, the guys yeah. dancing on fire <laughs> in the background was wild and so he has transferred his evil essence into the record album and then Gene Simmons ends up giving this thing to uh, Eddie yeah. and so 
because of Gene Simmons' performance, we go, well, did he do it on purpose? We never see what happens to Gene Simmons. That's true. Mm-mm. Many years, I thought he was the boots that were on the, you know, the console at the radio station. At oh, the no, end. that's a security guy. But it's a security yeah, guy. We yeah. never see what happens never to Gene what Simmons. Uh-uh. Yeah. Which, uh-huh. So Gene Simmons is going to play this album for the entire town uh, at midnight on Halloween. Yep, him and okay. Sammy came up with it, and that was their deal. So now Eddie's been gifted this, and of course, Eddie being tormented by the bullies at school. Um, in some really, like you said, harsh uh, stuff. It's um, bad. It's pretty bad. He goes to, he's invited to a pool party uh, by uh, uh, Leslie, the girl that he likes. Yep. Um, actually, you know what? I I just took it the, for the first time tonight watching it. Uh, when she gives him the Polaroid photo, photo that's right, before uh, uh, cell phones, right? Uh-huh. When they take a picture of him naked out in the gymnasium. Yes. Uh, she gives him the Polaroid. That's cool. her actually saving that Polaroid from being distributed. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I'm an idiot. <laughs> just figured this out she's like you know i'm like i made the rounds or i was whatever. like why she's are you explaining this to us she yeah. was told to give it back i'm like, I'm like oh no, she stole it and gave it back to him so he wouldn't be embarrassed yeah because yeah. yeah. she felt sympathy for him yes. when that uh event was happening yes um so she invites him to a pool party and then they fucking put a a, a weight him. in his backpack and try to drown him in the pool that's uh, some hardcore that's, shit and she fucked up man yep and she does dive in and save him mm-hmm and then they have a little fight and everything. And this is when he declares that he's going to get them all. And he's going to get them all. And we're like, uh, oh, oh, man. This language oh. is troubling. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm wondering. So now I'm wondering <laughs> if this is why, part of why this movie is uh, unavailable. I guess that's also why mm. I'm bringing it again tonight and why it's become this massive thing in my psyche mm. is because you can't legally get this movie. Yeah. Right, it was available on a DVD, well, like back in the day. That I don't think was in- sanctioned, uh, and it's been released in Germany. Yeah, and we happened to watch it on a copy called the Ultimate Comeback Blu-ray. That it looks pretty decent off of a film print that somebody oh, yeah. like took the time to put special features on. You can find it at comic book conventions and on eBay, but it has not been legally available no, since that, VHS. That that um. <laughs> This art here has been printed out from a printer, yep. it would seem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's not exactly the highest quality, but the uh, the image on the actual movie is great. Yeah, yeah somebody it uploaded good. it to YouTube. There's also a YouTube upload of the German uh, Blu-ray. But in Germany, this movie's known as Ragman. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we never find out why Eddie calls himself Ragman. It's just his nickname, right? Yeah. Interesting. He's got it on his license plate and everything. The writer says a Ragman is... An anagram. Uh, okay. It's, like anagram. It is anagram. It's anagram. Yeah, it's an anagram. But I'm like a... Oh, oh, for anagram. Yeah. Got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, all right. Wow. Uh, okay. I remember once uh, driving into the city and I was behind a guy who had a license plate and it was Ragman. And Did right there out? I was like, I see you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like, could have been we anything. just become best friends? <laughs> by and it's fucking Sandy Kerr and you're like, Whoa. Um... So, yeah, how does, uh, uh, um, well, I guess before he begins to commune with Sammy Kerr. He does. These st- scenes are shot like um, seances or something. Yeah, or like he's at an altar or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's the light, like the candles, the black candles before he actually, his yep. room is like, like a black candle attic that's surrounded by, uh, you know, anthrax and man of war and, you know. Motley Crue, uh, Ozzy Osbourne posters. Yeah. Um, it's, it's cool I mean, room. as far as like rooms go, it's a pretty cool room. For pretty cool, it's room. cool room. It's like the yeah. one unfinished huge room in his house. Yeah. And it's just bare walls and everything. And so, yeah, he's got he's got rock books. There's a lot. Of, yeah, rock books. <laughs> <laughs> every <laughs> punk, every punk has books on rock and roll. Yeah. Yep. Well, anyway, he uh, he, he begins getting backwards messages from Sammy Kerr directed directly to him, mm-hmm. and then he carries these uh, instructions out. And gets revenge on the uh, bullies. Mm-hmm. But plan, yes. he has a moral compass. I think that's the thing, even though he's like, we're, we're, you know, we need to get him. We need to fuck them all, you know? Uh, Sammy's like, all right. Yeah. He's yeah. like, yeah, we're going to kill everybody. He's like, wait, I don't want to kill anyone. Yeah. yeah. 
which I like about 80s movies. That's 80s movies always had that line. They assume that you guys are all like watching it going like, oh, yeah, we know where the, the line is. You don't yeah. actually want to cross that line. And be uh, all crazy, like, and kill people. Mm-hmm. We got to talk you down from the, yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. our hero is going like, okay, that's yeah, that's, that's enough. backing off a little bit. But he do- he gets into it for a little while, because his first get back at the the guys that are bullying him, he sets up a whole little obstacle course. This is a great chase scene, I think. That's uh, pretty fast paced. But he, I don't know, he sets up like a mop bucket and a chair and some other stuff. And, you know, he goes and shoves the, what's the bully's name? Tim? Tim, yeah. He goes and shoves Tim's lunch tray into his face, and then he's off. Yeah. There's That's a the chase whole. through the lunch room where they, or the library where they I, have to slow down uh, in order to walk I, through. I, that was they funny. That was slow. hilarious. <laughs> yeah. 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 Obey the rules. They'll speed walk. Yeah, librarians are fucking rough. <laughs> so they speed walk through the library. That was funny. They go through the band room. Uh, oh, one guy goes. Okay, but the band the, room, the the guy with the symbols, and I was like, someone should have been decapitated. Those right, symbols yeah. went flying, yeah. and I was like, oh my god! Yeah. They may have taken out the tuba dude. Yeah, there's one awesome stunt where some guy hits, I think, the mop bucket that's uh, that's yeah. turned over, and he goes like flying down the stairwell, the door, and <laughs> like that was not funny. down some steps, but over the steps he slipped. That was funny. Like that scene in Stone Cold where that guy goes flying into the canned like goods <laughs> yeah. and he go, but he goes flying like 10 feet into the area yeah. right. yeah. it, like it was like that it was like speed that. that doesn't make sense yes but it's great because it it's like the sense. very end of a water slide when you come shooting off yeah it's yeah, like yeah. that all the momentum catches you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's great well what did you guys think then about the uh so it, it actually takes a while in this movie before sammy kerr appears sure. on the scene yeah, yeah. was that too long movie? I would agree. Was it too long? Yeah. Too long. I feel like too, too long. long. And I was at those moments. I was asking myself, like, how long is this movie? Because it feels like we should be getting more towards the end at certain parts. But it. Yeah, it kept I felt like we should have been getting more chase. towards something. <laughs> I I felt Not like even. this was more of a teen drama than it was a horror movie until yeah. the third act. I was expecting more horror elements yeah. earlier on in this movie than yeah. it actually was. Probably. I was it like, was a lot of bullying yeah. and not a lot of anything else. I was like, this person might look up to John Hughes a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see it. Well, once we actually get to the Sammy Kerr uh, reveal, I guess he, you well, know, comes got- he comes out of the stereo speakers. Um, oh, we get blue lightning and portals and shit. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, 80s blue lightning. 80s yeah, blue lightning. 80s, Animated 80s blue lightning. Yeah, yeah, but combine and it with rock and roll. That's like was, the ultimate. I was kind of not expecting the amplifier to all of a sudden produce veins. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a choice. That were some reminded me of things. psychedelic drugs. <laughs> that was well, seen. Better or worse than the veiny horse from Prom Night 2. Horse. Oh, uh, yeah, the rocking yeah, horse. Yeah, yeah, the rocking yeah. horse. That gets sexually yeah, but aroused. Yes. And yeah, yes. no. Veiny and no. Yes. Yeah. But that. these are Fuck like that. imagery that you expected from, I think, like 80s fantasy horror movies because of the Nightmare on Elm yeah, Street movies, yeah. which, you know. I mean, looking at this movie now, it's like, okay, clearly they wanted to have another Freddy Krueger, except he doesn't come out of your dreams. He comes out of yeah. the the record. The, he's yeah. half I was going to say, it scarred. felt like Shocker a lot in the third act stuff. of this movie. Did honestly. it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which came later. Okay. Shocker yeah. came later. Yeah. But like the jumping through like like TV channels play a role and yep. everything, reaching into the TV, uh, electricity, yeah. it is very shocker Mm -hmm. yeah because i guess that's the thing sammy kerr like you're like okay so he's a ghost right i mean what's he gonna do or some kind of evil spirit he's an electric ghost because Mm -hmm. he comes out of a stereo (laughs) so he can come out of wherever the broadcast is being uh made from if that's off of a tape a copy of a tape a toaster includes a toaster a toaster oven he he smashes all that shit can't have sammy kerr coming out of toaster ovens yeah but yeah he can just jump out at any point any point in time like freddy krueger yes because yeah, at first I was on board. I was like, okay, I get it. Like, you know, as long as the music's there, they're not dead. I get it. But then when he started coming out of like toasters and shit, I'm like, yeah. okay, so the music has, has nothing to do with so it. He's well, they, it's no just electric. Yeah. They did set that up because at that point, right, uh, the the uh, Nuke has played the album. So it, right. it's being broadcast over the radio. So anything that can pick up a radio signal and toasters can pick up radio signals. I remember this was like a whole thing. When I was yeah. younger, because I lived near a radio station, we'd have like uh, Did you signal wake up interference. To your, like, toaster dancing like in Ghostbusters. 2? No, but you know, I don't remember a toaster doing it. I remember on our phones, you know, you'd pick up interference and stuff sure, like that. But sure. yeah, that was a thing. 
I mean, I can, well, no, I can see like picking up interference. Like that happens with like baby monitors and shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or fillings in your teeth. A toaster. That's not. I remember being a toaster. Oven. Oven. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's not a thing. I don't know if it's true. Do your research. Yeah. Older, <laughs> Do your research. Expect, <laughs> I expect some research done. Going dissertation. Next week. Yeah. I think I do enough, Sean. <laughs> well, Sammy, uh, so once he's out of the bottle, right, uh, and roaming around and basically threatening, you know, uh, um, Eddie, you know, it's like you should be loyal to your heroes mm-hmm. so they can turn on you, you know, because right. um, he's actually trying to kill uh, Eddie's tormentors. Yes. Yeah, that's that's what I don't really understand about this. Like, why is this happening? Why is he trying to kill these, like... And he asked for it. And why does it? But what, yeah. So why is Eddie? Try, Eddie, I think, is the problem in this situation. Because like, why are you upset that he's killing the people that are bullying you? Like, isn't this what you wanted? I think he didn't really think. But then, but then he makes. But then he makes it very clear that that's not what he wants. So why is this dude yeah. like? It's his yeah. number one fan. Why is he like tormenting him like this? Like, I don't really Eddie, understand. But doesn't Eddie like Eddie wants to get somebody? He just wants to see that he wants to them not to be in a position to torture him right yeah, yeah. Right. that's really what he wants i mean yeah. to see them suffer a little bit like right. they make him suffer but he's like the craft yeah but he doesn't want yes. them to be dead mm-hmm. you know he doesn't want to kill right. people mm-hmm. uh but sammy doesn't have that problem he's like no nah, we're gonna kill them because that's what you really want right and then he's like no 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 we don't, the, yeah, no i guess no, i don't really. really understand uh sammy's motive I think it's just a Faustinian bargain. He wants, okay. he's tied to, because at some point he's like, you know, like, I thought we had a deal. <laughs> you know, it's like, we, it's you and me, blah, blah, blah. And even like, Eddie he's his conduit in it coming back, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Sammy's real thing, I think, his motive is he wanted to play the high school, the high school because he wanted to destroy that fucking high school. He wanted Carrie. <laughs> You wanted to carry in rock and roll. This movie is carry for boys. It is. I think so. Okay. (laughs) That's not a slam. That's not a slam. I know it's not a slam because uh, uh, on the last episode uh, that was said. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it is. I mean, it's the story of the tormented uh, uh, teen uh, and there is a high school Mm -hmm. uh, gymnasium scene and Mm -hmm. a lot of people die. A lot of vengeance. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, a lot of it. But Mm -hmm. I suppose the difference here is that uh, our protagonist isn't the actual, isn't the one killing people. Right. It's yeah. by proxy. And so then he becomes the hero because he has to stop his genie that he's let out of the bottle yes. right. mm-hmm. from actually going through with this. Well, mm-hmm. it's too late. You know, mm-hmm. Sammy gets his moment uh, performing on stage, which I, I kind of dug that scene because it feels like the whole movie was building to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's the whole the thigh slapping and everything. Like yeah. it is built up to a big moment. Like, yeah. He gets his show. Like he gets yeah. what he wants, and then and we get our he gets show. To kill everyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the tone of the movie uh, changes in the third act, I think, because the first From what to what uh, it feels more serious and more dramatic at mm-hmm. the beginning, and yep. then it starts to get. A little silly. You There's, mean like blasting people <laughs> with guitar lightning and then having and then vaporizing. Yeah, because I mean, earlier in the movie he did grab an old lady out of a TV and she <laughs> came out burnt to a husk. Oh, yeah, which was great. And then Roger that had to was clean great. it up with a vacuum. That was, a, but that's a comedy moment, right? You funny. see Roger trying to vacuum up this court, and or you know, dust the, everywhere. Yeah, um, because it's it's like, but I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Like now. I mean, I like it, so I'm going to say that it's a good thing. Horror purists are going to disagree with this. So, like, no, a horror movie should be dark, scary, and, uh, like, on a terminal kick. But this one kind of has, like, a, it's like, but we want to be fun, so we're going to, it's, like, dark at the beginning, and then it lightens up as the the horror stuff actually right. starts to happen. Like, you're not really supposed to take this seriously. This is a right. fun Well, we do ride. get a, a moment where... um uh, a Walkman seduces a woman in this movie. That is where the like range of his powers and abilities really confuses me. Like, <laughs> just like what can he? What do? is happening in this scene yeah. here? He what can he do? What can't he a do? Green mist yeah. and pure uh, possessed her basically. Yeah, undressed. A green mist comes out and undresses her, um, possesses her, and then melts her a little bit. 
Okay, yeah. but she, but oh, when you say possesses her, you're really skipping over that she's basically like orgasming while oh, she's definitely. possessed. Like, yes. oh, yeah, he's she uh, leaving out a big her. part. But of I don't even idea. think it's she's yeah. a groupie and he yeah. got her. She's having. Se- oh, I don't even know if it's him. I think okay. So this is this is uh, something that only the the, the diehard trick or treat purists will pick up, right? Because this, I don't think the movie explains this very well. But um, all. Uh, not all, but a lot of uh, heavy metal bands have their mascot, right? Um, uh, was it was right. Eddie from Eddie, Iron yeah, Eddie Maiden Carmen. or the Crimson Ghost or something like that. And uh, Sammy Kerr actually does have one called like Skeezix, and Skeezix is the green lizard creature that shows oh, up. Yeah, but the you're like lizard. But yeah. it, like, and that's the thing that actually <laughs> fucks that. her in the back <laughs> of right. the <laughs> of the uh, car. She does yeah. open her eyes to a giant fucking. Yeah, lizard. but in the it movie, you just it's read it because you don't see Skeezix. Like I've seen the movie a bunch of times, and I've seen like the tattoo I think that he has of uh. Skeezix on his you know abdomen or wherever it is, and you know on album covers and stuff like that. But the movie doesn't focus on that enough that you would recognize that that's what it is. It's like all of a sudden gotcha. this fucking lizard creature. Yeah, it's yeah. a out of nowhere. It was yeah. very out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Yeager. Kevin Yeager who did the effects on this. Yeah. Uh, he made, Kevin Yeager made a dragon. Well, a lot of the stuff feels like a nightmare on Elm Street to me. The record album playing by itself, all yeah. the lighting coming out of the stereo system, um, a lot of the veiny um, you know, uh, music equipment and all that. Uh, because they had just done, I want to say, um, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, because I think Joel Sosa and the producer was also involved in that, so they basically brought the crew over. They said that the the the, the genesis for this movie was um, the producer had, like, Trick or Treat. That's the name of the movie. Dino De Laurentiis goes, yep, Trick or Treat. And then they're like, okay, but we don't know what it is. So they give it to Rock Rhett Topham, you know, it's like, okay, Trick or Treat's the name of it. And he's like, well, you know, we're going to do a movie about a, a, a heavy metal horror uh, a rock star comes back from the grave by somebody playing a record record backwards. And they're like, sold. All right. But the pumpkins <laughs> are <there>. good. Yep. <laughs> Somehow that's a Halloween movie. And therefore, we'll just put a movie. costume dance at the end and we'll be good. Yeah. He said his original version was a lot darker. But, you know, I don't know. The, this one is calibrated more for an entertainment experience. I would yeah. think so. Darker means that Eddie starts killing people. Yeah, yeah. Or something, like- you know, it's like, it's going to be the exorcist of our generation kind of thing. It's like, nah, cool your jets. We want people right. to have popcorn, yeah, <laughs> drink a beer. Scared. Enjoy a rock show and move on. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the last, uh, like, quarter of this movie is a demon rock star bursting out of speakers. Windows. Car chases. There's car chases. There's people getting disintegrated. Cops get disintegrated to their boots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It like ramps up, which I also like that about it that, you know, like, you know, in the third act, you're like, oh, fuck, we're in like a oh, car yeah. chase. It goes, yeah, it goes you know? comparatively to the rest of the movie. Yeah, it goes way up right there at the end. I guess I'm just not sure what the end goal is. Of, at this point in the movie, like of like Sammy, of or of the, the what purpose of any writing? of it, like yeah. what is Sammy trying to do? What are they trying to do about Sammy? Like I don't. This is where it kind of loses me a little bit. Like um, I, I don't. Sammy just. I think it's just revenge. Like Sammy just. But yeah. what are, why are they chasing him? Like how do they know how they're going to stop it at this point? Like it kind of feels like it's a chase for the sake of a chase. I mean, it might be. Yeah. Well, I mean, that scene, yeah, yeah, is definitely made to liven up the movie, Mm -hmm. I think. There's there's a solid 25 minutes of just the kid going, follow me, to his new girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of it. But the urgency is he has to stop Sammy Kerr from, like, taking over there. But they don't There's too much time between the dance and the ending or something like that in there where it's just like, we should have been hurrying up. He's been going, I guess the way you got to follow is, like, him trying to, like, okay, I've let this thing out. Yeah. Of my record yeah. i have to destroy the record so he does that you know funny scene with his mom sources, he, he yeah. wanted another record or stereo system so then he's like well fuck i gave that curse tape to tim yep. so i need roger to go and get that but then sammy kerr shows up to roger and is like play my tape at the dance <laughs> you know because sammy's like i want to fucking be at that goddamn high school so yeah. i burn it down so roger judas 
plays the fucking that was a good joke too uh plays the tape at the at the dance so now eddie's got to go destroy that tape yep. then he's like okay but then after the dance is where because it feels like the dance is where the movie should have ended honestly. yeah, yeah. i was like i was good with the dance here. yeah, yeah. But it's even, the carry ending you but know sean like, was like but there's still one more tape out there that they set up early on was yeah. that nuke had made a copy of the tape and now sammy can go anywhere you know so we got to yeah. stop him from doing that but he can't because it's midnight and so the tape yeah, is so playing. Then we're just like, yeah, oh, well, I, we have to stop him. What time is it? 11.59. Yeah. And that's that's <laughs> when I'm like, like ah, okay, what's work. the goal? Yeah, 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 exactly. So the goal is to get to the radio station and destroy that tape. But they don't make it in time. Right. So it's so already out it, there. That extends the movie even further. Mm-hmm. But I think it's, yeah. So it's the ghost is like, uh, so he, it's still alive. And somehow yeah. you have to still, you've got to put this evil back in the ground. you got to mm-hmm. kill it. We know that he has an aversion to water because he's an electric. Because he got stuck in a toilet. <laughs> yeah. Also unexpected. Got flushed. I forgot about that. Into the toilet. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they got to race out to the radio station, declare their true love for each other in this, like, very dramatic moment as the has got to split up and he leaves her in a field and tells her to it cut does. to a hundred it it's not a i mean i guess they're in a, in a hurry and everything but it doesn't seem like a well thought out plan it's like i'm gonna insult him until he shows up in the back seat through a radio yeah, and yeah but this is you know what it's a I it's a teenage some... fantasy you can yeah. you can get a demonic spirit to uh want to attack you by just calling him a, a poser <laughs> But my thought is, if if I'm writing this movie, this was all resolved at the high school. You know what I'm saying? If I'm writing this movie, it makes sense to end this movie where he gets vengeance by killing all the people at the high school that, like, maybe didn't accept him or whatever. It's this kind of cycle of of outsiderness, right? Yeah. Uh, to me, that's where the movie ends. But so, his, like, this his, is all extraneous. But his position has changed before the, you know, like, he doesn't want anybody to die before the high school. No, I... Should, Never mind, we'll move past it. Well, but, yeah. well yeah. he should have been on his way to the radio station, like, during the dance. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, to, be, yeah. to being played at the right. dance. Like, yeah. the, the yeah. song is being played, it goes on at the dance, and he's like, oh no, I have to go before they all get killed and save them all. Like, that's what should have been happening at yeah. the same time, I think. Yeah. Speed it up. To make it Make oh, these two storylines happen parallel to each yeah, other. And yeah, and not have one happen. And, then and then, yeah, happen, yeah, and then happen, yeah. yeah. I feel yeah. like it should have been kind of more happening at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's where the lag I felt. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. All right. Well, I'm I'm fine with it the way that it is, but I'm <laughs> biased. Know, I'm know. biased. <laughs> so, yeah. And so there is like a, I, I was kind of disappointed that the send off of Sammy Kerr, basically, you know, by insulting him, calling him poser. Uh, Mark Price gets Sammy in the back of a, a, a cop car and drives off a bridge because, yeah. you know, and into the water. And there's like a ripple effect of, uh, of lightning. Mm-hmm. And you're like, mm-hmm. oh, that that's it for Sammy. He's he, mm-hmm. he's dead because uh, she goes and Leslie goes into the radio station and destroys the tape, which he was protected be, by the light right. ring. He should have exploded. Desert. Yeah, there should have been like an explosion from the like, water or yeah, something. Yeah, there should have been something. That seems like a, too easy way to go mm-hmm. out for him. Yeah, in this movie. He should have done something else. Music in this movie is done by Fast a group way? called Fastway. Do you I know like Fastway? Them. I don't know who they are, but I like them. They were, I guess, a super group uh, that was formed by, and the name comes from Fast Eddie Clark, and he was with Motorhead, and he okay. left Motorhead, and then uh, Dave King was the vocalist, and he later went on to Flogging Molly. Okay. Uh, Flogging yeah, yeah. Molly? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, so they had made an album, and then were contacted by the producers, you know, because everybody knows everybody in the industry, and like, hey, we're looking for somebody to do, you know, music for this. And uh, so they did the soundtrack. I think there's like it's 10 tracks on the album, but five of them are new for the movie. Mm. The other five, I think, are off the uh, some other album that they've done. And pretty much right after recording the soundtrack, as is want to happen in the music industry, Ego uh, comes into the factory and they split up. And mm-hmm. so this that's why, why on the video... Is this why we don't get a Blu-ray of this? Because that's rights? what I'm wondering. Okay, but, I'm guessing but that's this why. is the thing. So I, I assume that is why. Because other Gene Simmons movie, you know, we know Gene Simmons and his. Uh, I got to control yeah. all the shit that you know that I'm in and make money off of it. Okay, 
But I don't think it's him because all of no. his other movies are out there. So I think it's I've a music seen, right. Yeah, I've seen more movies have problems with music, clearing music than anything else. So I'll bet it's music rights. But this Halloween, Ooh. Sean, Uh-oh. this Halloween, there's been a crazy all the well, is it crazy? To me, it is that right now, uh, gutter garbs and fright rags Resurgence. have and I released think cavity colors too. There's uh, been yeah, at some, least some three point. I've seen, yeah, licensed trick or treat uh, clothing and the soundtrack album has been released on a, Ooh. on a 33 blood red uh, record yeah. album. So it's like, okay, then I expected the Blu-ray release announcement and it never came. Ah. So we're here telling you, right. uh, you know, that this movie exists, right? Well, they don't get a Blu-ray, they get us. <laughs> maybe they're going to announce it at midnight on Halloween. Ooh. Yeah. Maybe. That would be, that would be awesome yeah. if they did that. <laughs> okay. On uh, Gene Simmons and if they Twitter. do now, they owe us money because it was our idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, who knows? You'll be seeing this movie maybe soon or, you know, like I said, it's on YouTube. Um, all right. Do we get any stray observations on? I don't think uh, so. We're going to uh, uh, bring up, because at a certain point, uh, Eddie has to make a tape from the record that he's going to give to people. And I think we thought during the movie we were going to forget. We all used to do that, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Make cassette it, tapes. Make cassette tape. Because yeah. I, I, we, we were discussing it. It's like, I don't think I've ever bought a cassette tape. I've made plenty of them. Never bought one. Oh, I definitely oh, bought, bought many. Yeah, yeah, I definitely yeah. bought I some. So. Oh, no, yeah. I always had my dad's collection. So I was just listening to his shit. Yeah, I'm older than you guys. So I was buying yeah. fucking oh, cassette yeah, tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I never, I, I, I never, bought lots of cassettes. I never yeah. bought eight tracks, so I'm not of that generation. But no, cassettes that were was, the way. My dad had eight tracks. Yeah, and uh, like I'm an idiot. I I liked cassettes better than uh, LPs because you could take them with you. Mm-hmm. You know? True. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I did have a record player, but I had a lot more cassettes than I did. And the mm-hmm. fact that you know you could record stuff off the radio right. and yep. uh, you know. Yeah, make copies mm-hmm. of cassettes and make copies of music. So but those fast, remember the two the the twin deck? Oh yeah, uh, cassette things. Yeah, where you could, mm-hmm. high speed record uh, in sync. You had high speed. Oh man, yeah. no, I had. Oh, we did. I we was, did too. Yeah, yeah. no, I, was, I had I a like, sound design that I got from Kmart. And it was awesome. I had a little high thing, I, and I called into the radio and said, "Hey, can you play this?" And I had to wait for four hours until they <laughs> played that fucking song. <laughs> And just recorded. But we it. all did. We all sat yeah. there oh, waiting. Yeah, yeah. But that's all I had waiting. for like ever. And then none of this high speed shit. Oh yeah, you we did. Fucking- <laughs> I think we got our sound system from K's merchandise. Yeah, same uh, K's uh, merchandise. My yeah. dad was a diehard for K's merchandise. My dad was K's. too. Do I miss it? I My family it. used to make it's trips so and we got excited. To go yeah, to because yeah. it was like an it was like every infomercial thing in yeah. Chachki you could ever want in one yep. store. There was something yeah, seen on TV. There was something for everyone in that store. <laughs> yeah, that whole wall of just like as seen on TV oh, clocks yeah. and shit they had yeah. that were all going at the same oh, yeah. time. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Like they would have a section of weird like lava lamps and all the shit like yeah. that. They had, the, they had it was really it, random awesome shit. Random yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Triggering what memories a great here. Store. Yeah. I think my brother worked there. My dad bought my mom's engagement ring from K's <laughs> Merchandise. So yeah, I bought my engagement and wedding oh, rings at K's oh, Merchandise. Man. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm sure no longer married. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So we're gonna go around the room and tell you whether or not we would recommend that you would watch Trick or Treat. Uh, again, um, and I haven't listened to the past episode before we recorded this. So. Um, but first of all, we are going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank what? you, tiny clapping tiny hand. <laughs> This is oh, a- and we got a tiny Igor. Yeah. <laughs> Igor, is this your hand? Take my strong hand. <laughs> it's my strong hand. The hand that keeps on giving. Really the tiny does. hand. Yep. We'll post a picture of this tiny hand. <laughs> oh, they know what a tiny hand looks like, don't they? Yeah. It goes on your finger. Yeah, it's a yeah. finger puppet. But it's, it's a, a flaccid one. It's not a, <laughs> not a rigid one. It's a squishy rubber hand. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, now we're going to tell you how you can uh, write in on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. <laughs> or you can. <laughs> Finger guns with the tiny Finger hand. Guns. 
Or you can follow along on Instagram for the time of your life. It's Saturday night freak show. Or maybe you'll see pictures of this tiny hand. That's right. The tiny hand might. Yeah. Um, All right. So about tonight's movie, Trick or Treat, Dom Cree writes in and says, oh, my, this is what brought me to the dance. The Saturday night freak show dance. The original version of this. Uh, full circle. Oh, we love it. Thanks, Dom. Right. Dom's been with us since forever. The, forever. Yeah. Uh, Nick Siebel says, I absolutely love this film. For the longest time, I thought that I was the only one who'd ever seen this movie. <laughs> it's a true 80s gem with an amazing soundtrack by Fastway that still gets played in my vehicle to this day. Nice. And I can't wait to hear this episode rock on the Saturday Night Freak Show. The legend of Sammy Kerr lives on. He will never die. I hope you enjoyed the dolphin tail talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Aaron Dawn, Murphy's mom, says, I'm so pumped for this. I never got to see it as a kid, but I always wanted to. You're all such a wonderful and entertaining podcast. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for we listening. So. Uh, to answer you, Aaron, Scraw793 says, it's up on YouTube, and I've been waiting for an excuse to watch it. I've always wanted to see Ozzy play a priest. I mean... I mean, it's not nah, fulfilling. Yeah, he's he's he, struggling. Yeah, no. Um, Joe. Well, I mean, I guess that's the appeal of Trigger Treat over the other heavy metal horror movies. Is it has Gene Simmons and Ozzy Osbourne. Right, it's like right. A good stamp of scene. approval from rock yeah. and roll. Yeah. yeah. Um, Joey Blythe says, "I thought this was the Ozzy movie, but Ozzy's IMDb list is more extensive than I first thought." Yeah, I'm sure he shows up in a few things. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, he was in Ghostbusters the remake. But which, Jesus which Christ! One? I hate you. The 2016 one. Yeah, it was such. Oh. It was a cutaway yep. to Ozzy joke that was. <laughs> I don't remember that. that was all awful. Flat. I'm just like, fuck <laughs> you. We're, yeah. we're making Ozzy jokes. Yeah. That movie yeah. just sucks. That movie yeah. sucks. Yeah. Uh, Spags Getty says it's a cracking film and Ragman rules. Ragman. He <laughs> may know it Spags as Ragman. Um, two weeks ago. Watch the movie called Dark City. You sure did. And uh, Evan Meyer says um, uh, about William Hurt. Uh, he says, I'm not used to seeing William Hurt play a good guy. Yeah. Because William Hurt, Hurt right. was in that movie. Mm-hmm. I can see that. That's a good guy in the villain. Yeah. Well, That's true. Well, what? It's debatable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Who knows? Is anyone good in the ambiguous. village? Okay. Yes. The doctor. Yeah, you remember the doctor? He's a doctor and he gets throat cancer and then he has to be treated in his own hospital and realizes it's so impersonal how doctors treat patients. He has a what? What movies? Kind of, the Doctor. Oh, oh, I was like, I have no idea what you're I've talking about. Yep. I worked at a movie theater for many years. Yeah, and saw did, everything yeah, that did. came out. Okay, so uh, <laughs> thank you all for you. writing in. We greatly appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we Holly. thought of mm. what we think of Holly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you start. No, I don't uh, know. <laughs> Holly, what did you think of Trick or Treat? Um. Well, this was a long time coming. Yeah. I knew nothing about this movie other than what Colin has told us, and then we did watch the trailer before it started. Um, was it what I expected? Mostly, I think. Mostly what I expected. I feel like I was expecting more ridiculousness. Um, there- the end of the movie, but moved up. Well, even the end of the movie, like, there wasn't a lot of, like, I mean, yeah, it was kind of cool. Like, there was some, you know, like, disintegrating people, which was funny. It was fun. You know, nothing but boots left. Like, mm-hmm. I like that. That was funny. Um, but I guess I always assumed that it was going to be more horror. Like, it's, more hardcore? Yeah. I, I thought it'd be, like, some more extravagant kills. Like, we had... We had an entire shop scene. Yeah, that drill should have gone through. The his drill should have went through his head, yeah. and it didn't. And I was like, oh, really? We're not doing that? So I, I feel like I wanted more from it. I wanted like actual fun kills because it didn't seem very horror ish to me. Um, and I feel like the end was. I mean, we already established like the end didn't end where it should have. There's there's more story that they could have combined it and overlapped it a little more to make it go by quicker and more exciting. Also, where's Gene Simmons at the end? Mm-hmm. I I would have liked. Yeah, I, I would have. I would have liked some sort of like Gene Simmons got away with the actual only copy, like a leave it open. Like, right. Oh, yeah. if he drives away with a copy still yeah. in his car or something yeah. like that. Like, like mm, oh, it doesn't he, have the Freddy Krueger ending. Oh, yeah. Like, I, yeah. I need, yeah. I need that ending where it's like, oh yeah, rocks never really did. You know, mm. like that's what I wanted. Um, so 
it's a fun movie. I'm going to still recommend it. It's a fun time. Um, but it did leave a lot to be desired. I, I, anytime we watch movies like this, like it's, it's never, they never do the thing we want them to do. Right. We, Michaela and I were talking about this before the movie. Like they never do the thing that, that we want. Them I mean, to we do. had that problem with <laughs> Berserker last yeah. week even. Berserker didn't do what we wanted it to do at all. No. Yeah. We've had some that have done exactly yeah. what we wanted true. to do. As true, true, true. it at the screen. Very true. Um, so yeah, I feel like this could have given us a lot more. It had the potential. Um, but it's still a fun time, so I'm still going to recommend it. Alan, I'm still going to recommend it. <laughs> You're not offending me. But Michaela, what did no, you think? No, God, Colin yeah. will love this thing until the day he yeah, dies, yeah, no matter yeah, what yeah. we say. Yeah, I'm glad I finally have context to apply to this poster <laughs> that I right? s- sit next yeah, to and look the at all the time. The poster still doesn't really um, apply. But it's only talking yeah, <laughs> I... Yeah, I I agree with a lot of what you said, Holly. Like, I I expected more horror elements and less, like, school ties. Because it was very much, like, what it's like to be bullied to high school for a lot of the movie. And, like, I kind of feel like after the cold open of your bully getting... Or of your kid getting bullied, you don't need more of that. And this movie was, like, three acts of being bullied. And I was like, we get it. He's an outcast. Like, let's get to the part where he, like, gets revenge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) So that part, I was like, okay, we've, we've seen this before. You know, but I also do like that it kind of brought in those like slasher elements, like the inciting incident and then the part when they snap and then they get revenge and then they regret it. You know, I loved all that. Mm. But um, I, yeah, I wanted more horror and uh, mm-hmm. little, just a little bit more from that side of it, um, because I like after the first bullying incident, I'm already sympathetic with that character. You yeah. don't need to keep doing it. I get it. And they did like at one point in the movie, they did go into like he's starting to like get cooler. Like, yeah. Get, right. Take more on the persona. Yeah. He says I was cow like, at one point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was. I wanted more of that. Oh. It was very oh. Tobey Maguire becomes cool in Spider Man yeah. Three. Is I what wanted it was more like. of yeah. that. Or I almost wanted like Sammy to start taking over him more. Yeah. Which is why he gets cooler and everything. Yeah. And then that's what I mean. Like I wanted more of that. Yeah. Like Venom and Spider Man and Spider Man Three. Yes. That's what you wanted. So I, there was a lot I liked. Um, I'm glad I finally saw it. And like, I think of like rock and roll horror is definitely the best one by a long shot. Like, I don't think it's even close. So I think you need to watch it because of that. I think it's like a key piece of like education for this genre. So I would say definitely watch it, but like, don't be surprised if you can kind of see where it's going to go. So Sean, what do you think? Um, I agree with a lot of what you two have said. I think there are some issues with the movie and pacing and whatnot. Um, but, uh, I like this. I think this is a very fun movie. Um, the soundtrack I think is great. Um, I think, uh, Tony Fields is doing great as Sammy Kerr. Um, yeah. He's doing fantastic. Yeah, yeah he is great. great. So that's, that's good stuff. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted more, of, uh, more of the back end move up. Uh, like you said, this sh- uh, more horror in this, more kills, I think maybe would have helped this out but other than that i still think this is a fun movie um i mean there are opportunities to do a lot of other things that we've mentioned before but i you got to judge it on what the movie is and it's still a fun movie and the soundtrack gets me and yeah I, i'm gonna recommend it to you because you know rock and roll man never dies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there it is uh i recommend trick-or-treat colin well i mean i'm uh biased as all hell yes, toward this are. movie um and i think for the reasons i explained earlier i think it's become the white whale just because it feels like i'm the only person who knows that it exists you know We're slowly slowly yeah. spreading that I was yeah. like, no longer colin yep. yeah. you're not alone anymore not alone. uh and because it's been lost to time i think it would be less special to me if it had been out there for years and years and years i think probably i said this on the on the first uh time we did this but To me, it's like when I look back on a decade, there's usually like 20 good horror movies out of any given decade. And to me, this is like a good horror movie from 1980s that a lot of people aren't aware of. Like we're we're tunneling into like the sub, uh, you know, the B sub B movies trying to find, you know, the good, Mm -hmm. you know, horror movies. And I'm like, but this one should have ranked higher and we go like oh yeah there's trick or treat and then there's all these other ones Uh but it's like trick or treat is still one that you have to dig to find Mm -hmm. and a lot of people probably haven't at this point um i think it's a professional movie that's what makes it better than uh all the other rock uh or metal themed horror movies with the exception of maybe like it said uh deathgasm being the the closest thing it's a you know professional thing that was uh, uh done recently um yeah, like rock and roll minds weren't in charge of the creativity on this. 
Because right. otherwise, you get rock and roll nightmare. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, what yeah, happens yeah, when yeah, the rock yeah. mind is the creative yeah. individual. This is actually it. a competent this movie. Filmmakers yeah. made this. Movie. Yeah, and that's okay. why yeah. I guess that's what I don't like about um, Black Roses. You know, it's like, well, we'll have to go back <laughs> at some point. I'm sure we'll do you know Black Roses, but because um, a lot of people have seen that one, right. you know, mm-hmm. um, and you know the odd thing is. I hear and understand what you guys are saying about the pace, but for me, it's like this is kind of like the pace that I grade I grade other movies against because I do like that it 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 unfolds right. It 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 does always seem like you know the movie doesn't you know give you everything up front, mm. and then you're like, well, now we got to try and top that by the end of it. There's no way you can. This one does kind of build to its big set pieces at the end where like it starts kind of small and then has car chases and things blowing up and all that stuff. And yeah. And that's kind of how I like to see movies happen. The fact that it, you know, it's like you want to see Sammy Kerr, you know, you're like, when is he going to show up? Maybe it's a test of your uh, uh, patience, but to me it's that, you know, movie saying like, I know you want to see the guy show up. So we're the so crowd. we're gonna we're gonna In wait. Rock concert. Show. <laughs> Sam, yeah, Sam, yeah, yeah. I mean, we are the rock crowd. And then I'm always like, ah, oh, we only get to see him for that one fucking. He just does one song, you know. But that's also, uh, you know, you leave him wanting more kind of thing. And so, a true rock know. and roll movie. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I guess to me, I grew up in this era. To me, it's it's personal to me because I was into heavy metal. I, you know, I was the kind of uh, the stoner kid listening to metal at uh, high school. So it's like, eh, maybe this is in that, you know. Uh, it feels close. It's not like remotely uh, <laughs> accurate, but it feels like, and maybe because of when I saw it, it feels like it's from that uh, time period of my life. So I have a, uh, an attachment to it, but I think it still succeeds as like a fun, uh, eighties horror movie. You're looking for a fun eighties horror movie. It checks the box. Uh, and if you like rock and roll, I think it's, uh, well, I think that's maybe it. Like, I remember on the German Blu-ray, which, yes, I ordered the fucking double or whatever, the, the you clamshell did. You did. Uh, German, because, uh, you know, I was like, well, you can finally actually see the movie. And they had this, like, long extended special feature because it was made by a record company, mm-hmm. put it out, right, in Germany, NSM Records or something like that. But part of the tie-in was they went to a, a heavy metal festival and this guy represented from the record company is going around to every single band and like, okay, we're, we're going to talk to them about trick or treat. And every, all of them have seen it. You know, they're all like, Oh, it's a great, you know, if you're into heavy metal music or rock music from the, the eighties, it's like, it seems like you've already seen this movie. And it does seem like, I know because if he hasn't if seen this, your dad would fucking, dad would I bet love this, love this movie. Okay. <laughs> and it's on YouTube. I'll have to ask him about that. Watch Trick or Treat. All right, so there you go. It's uh, I think that was a uh, universal. A, universal. That's a freak show. Watch it. Gonna... Curve will come get you. Uh-huh. That's right. YouTube. YouTube. Yep. Find the best version that you can. Uh, next week, uh, it is still the Halloween season, so that means we're not going to be disappointed when Sean chooses Trick or Treat from nineteen eighty seven. Six. 86. Fuck. That ruins my whole thing. <laughs> Fast forward 21 years then. <laughs> and we're going to watch 2007's Trick or Treat. No way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We're going to do it. All right. We wonder what will come after that, but we don't know. We'll find That's why out I next week. One, I'm like, I don't have to figure out the next one. Yeah, yeah. I instantly okay. Google, is there a third trick or treat? <laughs> yeah. There is. And then I have to look, is there a fourth one? I'm really fucked on this one. Oh yep. my God. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. It's uh, Trick or Treats. There's a uh, 70s movie that I've never right. seen. Yeah. Uh, okay. All so right. uh, next week, Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat. Yeah, we had Trick or Treat, now Trick or Treat. That's yeah. right. With Sam, the demon little pumpkin boy. Yep. Uh, it's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.